Hello and welcome to Ecosystems channel. We are a family company that specializes in wooden houses and modular houses and recoveries. Uh, I'm going to talk today about licensing and legal requirements to own or build or recover a house in Portugal. Uh, this video was suggested by Deborah Richmond from Pure Portugal. Uh, because apparently there's a lot of um, confusion or curiosity about building in Portugal and I'm going to try to explain the best I can uh, what I've gathered uh, of information uh, with my experience. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an engineer, I'm just somebody that works in a company that has been faced with a diverse reality uh, regarding uh, building houses in Portugal. Um, English is not my nature uh, language, so I'm going to try to speak the best I can uh, in English to try and give you some, to share some experience regarding legal requirements in Portugal. First, we're going to talk about uh, wooden houses. Um, I've seen some people over the internet thinking that a wooden house, because it is ecological, doesn't need a permit. Well, actually it does, just like any other house. Uh, the law doesn't make any difference between a, a, a light steel frame, a wooden house, a stone house or a concrete house. If it's a house, if it's a permanent build, then it needs licensing, okay? Uh, there's nothing that you can do to avoid that. Some people have suggested that if you put your house on stakes or on pillars or whatever and that it doesn't touch the ground, you don't need licensing, well, you do, you're occupying land and there's nothing in the law that says that if the house is not touching the land 40 or a meter or whatever, that you don't need licensing, you do. Wooden house is just, is just like any other kind of house. Also, uh, regarding wooden houses, uh, there, are, there is a confusion I've seen in some forums People think that if they have a land that is ran, uh, meaning an ecological reserve, uh, that they can build a wooden house because it's ecological. Uh, again, that is not true. Uh, if there is absolutely no permit to build in some kind of land, then you cannot build in that land, even if it is a wooden house. That would not be legal. Modular houses and cabins. Well, usually you might think that they don't need a permit. Well, actually they do. Now, houses that don't need permits are usually very small. We're talking about tiny house, something not bigger than 15 square meters. So anything bigger than that, and you need to check with district. Uh, some districts may allow you to go as big as um, an insulated house of 30 square meter. But uh, again, uh, it is subject to some conditions. For instance, usually uh, it's not an urban land, as we said, it's a rustic land, but uh, you need um, not, you cannot have any licensed house in that land. Otherwise, uh, they will not let you do it, uh, or you need a specific kind of permit. So. The, the main reason here is that uh, some um, districts, and in central Portugal that, ha that happens a lot, some districts um, want people to come and live in their land and so in a way to attract new citizens and in a way to have lands uh, occupied and exploited and, and to have life, they are starting programs, so you have different local programs and that will allow people to build um, houses, sometimes even 40 square meter, a little bit bigger, uh, without the need to, to license it. But it's a permit nonetheless. You have a permit that says that don't, you don't require a permit to build, but you have legal papers. Now, never initiate something, never invest, if you're not sure that you can do what you can do just because you did online or just because somebody told you so. Because the law is always evolving and what was true two years ago is not true right now. Now, something that people ask me frequently, temporary building and, and mobile homes. Now, I know there is a lot of um, conflicting information online and that goes again with the talk we had previously about building on stakes, you know, houses on pillars. There is also people that say they're going to put a house and they're going to put wheels underneath it to say that it's temporary. 
Well, a temporary building or mobile home is also something that um, has some laws um, that, uh, that rule how they work. So it's not like you have a loophole and you just put a wheel under the house and you can do whatever you want. Actually, you cannot. And you always need to check what you can and cannot do. A temporary building is meant to be like that, temporary. So I've um, talked with that with an engineer once and uh, he told me uh, uh, something that a temporary building cannot be there more than 365 days and I've heard that also from an architect but I haven't been able to find the law yet because well this is not my job you know uh, when I when I have uh, something that requires legal uh, counsel I usually go with the client to check with the specialist in specific case and I've never done anything that was temporary. I've done something that is mobile, but not temporary. So regarding the temporary building, um, I would be very careful with the thinking that if I put just wheels underneath, I can do whatever I want. That is not true. Uh, I've known cases in Algarve, uh, in the mountains of here, near the Serra da Estrela, where it's a local reserve, where local authorities have asked people to remove their caravans and their mobile homes because um, they were considered to go against uh, the law. So you need to be very careful with that. Uh, there is no way written that if you put wheels on their house that you can put it wherever you want, especially if it is connected to um, permanent grids such as electrics, sewage or, or water. Uh, from the municipality. So be careful with that because it doesn't work as uh, apparently some sellers might want you uh, might, might want to tell you. <clears throat> now also uh, in this community there is a big concern regarding yurts and other kind of building like that um, tents and, and, and cabins. The thing is you have to realize uh, this is something that is um, quite new to Portugal. I don't believe that 20 years ago there were that many people asking can I build a yurt, do I need a permit? So what we said earlier is also true. The law is evolving and, and Portuguese authorities are trying to follow uh, the new needs that are uh, arriving and uh, regarding yurts and all these kinds of bills you might find uh, sometimes that local authorities are not prepared and sometimes they are not um, they don't understand the goal the objective of what people might want to do so it's very important that when you have a project that you try to do um, a file with what you want to build uh, do what is your objective your goal the materials so that when you go to local authorities instead of just having just um, a question, can I build a yurt or two, that you show them what you're gonna do. That's the best way they can actually help you if they understand your goal. And for that I'm also going to go with um, something that I would say is common sense. Now people uh, ask, can I do this or can I do that? Well, it's all about reasonable use and it's actually something that you'll find in the law with everything that is a building. Uh, when you do something and if it's a reasonable use, <clears throat> even if it's not, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if it, even if it's something that is not um, within the law's range, something that is, the law hasn't think about yet, uh, as long as it's reasonable use, uh, it's, if it's something that is not uh, evidently um, against the law, you shouldn't expect to have problems with local authorities. Now, you just have to know that if you do something and if the use that you're going to do with it is completely legal, uh, for instance, having a yurt just for yourself or your, your weekends or your or, um, uh, guest house, uh, you shouldn't be facing any problem with local authorities. Now, imagine that you want to use it for tourism, for renting or whatever a cabin, a yurt, a wooden house. Now, everything that has to do with tourism or renting or even a, an ecological village or whatever you want to do, never forget, this is something that needs a legal framework. 
because it is something that will have something to do with taxes, with money, and with the client's security. We're talking about hygiene, we're talking about um, fire security, we're talking about structural security. So when you want to go into something um, that has anything to do with tourism or, or renting, you need to be sure that what you do is known by local authorities and allowed by local authorities. <coughs> now, the, the main thing I would say is uh, always consult local authorities. That's, that's your best bet. Um, you know, we are constantly um, faced with new realities and there is no magical formula. Um, there is no perfect house, there is no one, no builder can tell you I've done this house or this module with these wheels or these conditions or whatever and you can put it wherever you want without licensing. Now that, is, that would always be a lie because each land is different in size and in category. You have agricultural lands, you have ecological lands, you have urban lands, you have agropastoral land and each district is different. So if each land is different and each district is different, then that house cannot be a solution for each case. That just doesn't happen, right? So always be sure of what you do. Always be sure that it is legal. The best way to secure your investment, the best way to secure yourself is to be sure that what you do is legal. Otherwise, you're at risk. Thank you very much to have followed this video. I'm Rafael Geronimo for Ecositanus Wooden Houses. Um, thank you also for Deborah Richmond for this suggestion of Pure Portugal. Um, follow our Facebook and uh, I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.